with the idea of embedded database, real-time subscriptions, collections, and built-in authentication with the ready-made API does not excite you, this cute little mascot in Pocket Space homepage will surely do. I mean, look at this guy. He's so cute. Many times I have a useless CMS idea for which I can't be bothered to build a backend for. Well, for lazy developers like you and me, we have a Pocket Base, a completely portable and drop-in back and which can work as a CMS as well. So today I will be exploring that. This is a dashboard that is being hosted in their server. We'll explore it now. So there are a bunch of collections on the side already and it does come with a user authentication system by default and then you have some sample collections on the side and each collection contains certain posts so in order to edit a collection record we can click here and on the side the edit page opens i like that it doesn't take me to any other page it opens directly from here and i can edit and you can delete the record from here and the ID is generated as a string rather than the number. So let's say that I want to add additional field here. How do I do that? So I would click here and if I click add the new field on the type, it gives me all these options. So I guess these are going to be satisfying all the different types of use cases that I might have for storing the data. But I wonder if I can extend these fields, for example, if I wanted to have a video field. In terms of validation, it provides some basic validation by default, like min length and max length, and then you have some regex pattern that you can apply, but this can be a bit more complicated, and I can also make it unique. And while configuring the collection, you can also define the API rules here as well. And these API rules will apply when you fetch from the built-in APIs. So if I click on this button, it gives me a code snippet in JavaScript and the Dart. And also it has some documentation on the different parameters that I can send. For example, page parameter can be used for pagination. And also if I scroll down here, it gives me a helpful response categorized by the status code so for 400 it will give me this one and for 404 it will give me this so this is very useful actually and it does provide apis for basic crud functionality plus a real-time subscription as well and you can create new users for your cms and then there is logs this is where all the api logs will be saved it's useful to debug your api calls and then if we go to the settings, we have some standard settings here. You can plug in your own SMTP. And then we have file storage. By default, it supports uh, local and S3 storage. Then there are experimental sync features. You can import and export JSON. And then there are authorization providers as well. And then you have admin module. The thing is, you can create new admins, but there is no privilege. Privileges. I hope they add a functionality to assign a different collections for different admins. This would be quite useful. Now that we are familiar with the backend, I'm going to start by downloading the application on my computer and then running it. We will do a test scenario in which we will set up a collection, set fields for it and set the API rules and then make some calls to grab the data. All right, I will download the Mac version. It's downloaded and I'm going to unzip it and I'm going to rename it to pocket base let's see what's inside so as you can see there is one file which is containing all the code so according to the documentation we have to run pocket base serve in order to serve it so let me open my terminal so I will write pocket and then serve whoops so my machine gave me this pop-up when I tried to run it. This is just a false alarm. You have to go to your security and disable that. And you can disable it by going to system preferences and security and privacy and click allow anyway. Okay, let me open it. So now it's opening. So let us go to the backend now. So this is the admin URL. I'll copy it and paste it here and first time it will ask for your email and password so i will just put any email and password here 
all right so we are logged in and we are ready to create our collection so in this case i will create a collection called cars and i will add some basic fields here for example name of the car it's required and then I will add another field called model and another field called date and time which will be date issued okay so now that we have modeled our collection let's start creating records so I'll create a record called RD and it's is true on 25th okay create okay so now that we have created our records we can test the apis through our trusty postman so we can copy this url okay so let's open our postman client and start testing the api this is the api url to list all the records i have to copy this and i will replace this here and as you can see that all the records are fetched okay so let's say we want to use one of these parameters here and we want to paginate our collection so currently it's returning all of the records but we can pass page as one and per page as one as well so it should return just one record which it does now let's create new record so it's the same url but as a post and it's passing all the data as a body so let's see okay and let me select the post as the method and it gives this let's see if it created new record and if I refresh the backend, yes, it did. And if we go to the log section here, it has recorded the request we made. And just to show you how the folder structure is, and this is what I found it a bit curious. Let me see if I can make it bigger. And this is the backend. It's called PB data. And if I go inside, there is some database files which I'm assuming are containing the records that I created. And just to test, I added a file field and to see how the data is stored, how the images are stored. So it did create a storage folder. So yeah, this has been my initial exploration of Pocket Base. And from the documentation, I can see that it can be extended and you can interact with the database as well. So yeah, this, uh, this has been a bit interesting. So I can see the Pocket Base is something very quick and simple to add into your project. I wouldn't recommend Pocket Base for a project that is very complicated. It is more suitable for simple project for which you need authentication, simple collections, and somewhat live data with the help of subscriptions. So yes, these has been my thoughts and thank you for watching.